Hey guys, welcome to Isaiah's Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing a projector. That's right, this is the Moton C1 LCD projector that supports 1080p uh, iOS and Android phone mirroring, if your phone can do that. You can take your tablet or phone uh, and do USB-C to HDMI to it if you want to that way, or just some kind of existing uh, media dongle that you have. Shove it in there. What I did was just hook up uh, an Xbox to it. Uh, for testing and I compared it just so you know to the ViewSonic PX 800 HD uh, that is a 2000 ANSI Lumen $1500 ultra short throw projector so we'll be looking at this this is a 100 and let me see the price the current price it is 169 so this is a 169 dollar projector so that's a huge gap that's almost toy like in figures on numbers uh, and you would like go, well, there's no way that other projector could even come close. It must look like an embarrassing night and day scenario. Not really. I was actually kind of surprised once you take the time to dial it in. So let's just talk about the specs on this thing uh, and the ANSI lumens and kind of all that good stuff. It's 130 ANSI lumens which the brightness they say is over 8,500 lumens, but the what you care about is the ANSI lumens. So it's 130 ANSI lumens versus 2,000. So it is very noticeable. Uh, the resolution is 720, but supports 1080. Uh, whenever I first connected it to the Xbox, it um, showed up as 720. I went into the controls, were able to change it to 1080, and the image instantly reflect that, reflected that and got noticeably better so it's kind of odd because it almost did go from 720 to 1080 but it says it's only 720 native but the image got up there it could have fooled me so it's some it could have fooled me it looked like it was 1080 almost comparable once you get down to the pixel size uh, between the view sonic and that one but when you take a picture side by side you're like oh well uh, the brightness isn't there and the pixels are a little larger on the Emoten. It uses Linux, which, I mean, there's only a few controls in there, some settings. Uh, I kind of messed with some of the uh, color settings and stuff like that, and the image kind of got worse, and I just ended on the default settings uh, of the device. I did try to play around with it, but I just ended up with the default, and that seemed to work fine. It's got Bluetooth 5.1 on here, so you could like play some music, I guess, or send it out to a speaker for louder music. Um, the speaker's not bad at all. If you can't beat them, blind them. Visual contact! You're not allowed up there! Oh, like it doesn't sound tinny, it doesn't uh, screech or anything when the volume's turned up. I had it on about 70%, and it sounded just fine. Like if it was a projector speaker, it sounded like what I thought it was going to sound like. So I wasn't mega impressed, and I was by far not disappointed either. So there you go. You got a 15 degree of keystone tilt in there. Um, the keystone is difficult because this is where, there's the box by the way. Um, here's where it, and here is the device. We're finally gonna get to talk about it. But the keystone is right up here. This is a hefty device too, by the way. The keystone's up here. You got manual focusing here. This is where like this looks expensive and it feels expensive. Like they didn't skimp on the plastic thickness. The gauge of the plastic is thick, durable. It's got a spot for your phone or tablet to lay and it'll fit a, a good size tablet there. So they didn't skip on anything but the this area here. This is where the money was skimped on. And, and they kind of have like a toy-like ha housing in here. Like the the... If you bump this, I'm sure the focus will get out. The keystone is in there pretty tight. But when you move the keystone, the top and bottom's getting blurry. So you, I ended up, the height that I had it that was comfortable to view and, and maintain the device and stuff like that was leaving the keystone popped out. I think it was on the bottom. So you kind of had a, 
not a perfect square in order to get sharpness all over but i did acquire the sharpness all over and it, once you start a movie i mean this thing is going to go in your kids room it's not going to be your home theater projector uh that you set up permanent it's going to be for outdoor movie night when there's absolutely no light around um that's what this is going to be just for like the kids you know it might be for you to watch a big movie in your bedroom or something if you've got a nice bare wall uh, when it's pitch black it looks fine you could carry out a movie there's no problem there with that so uh yeah uh one five watt speaker is in here it's on the side here and it sounds good all the way around for what it is and because of the leds you do get fifty thousand hour lifespan out of it uh more than you would ever watch this thing for it's got good rubber hefty feet they carry this rubber here down here and it's cushiony and it doesn't go anywhere so it's not going to slide off so this is model number c1 emoten projector uh, the buttons on the back, you don't need a remote. It comes with a remote, but you really don't need it. It's really good and clicky. They did a great job with the button layout back here. And I primarily use that because I sit next to the projector. Anyway, for the testing part, it's got headphone, AV, uh, HDMI 1 and 2, two USB ports, a VGA port, and a micro SD card slot uh, all back here on the back. So they have a decent layout back here. So... They did a good job. I mean, for the 169, uh, this definitely feels and looks like a 250, 249 uh, projector. Uh, so the cost is down for this day and age right now for the stuff to be uh, kind of overpriced. The 169 feels like you're getting a good deal, and I don't think you'd be disappointed in this uh, whatsoever. We kind of covered the specs and the abilities uh, of this device, really. So let's get into uh how it looked so if you're going to watch a movie and you have any sunlight coming through the blinds it's going to tear the image apart it's not that many lumens it's not over it's not even over 200 ansi lumens so the image is going to be torn apart this is for night viewing or a completely blacked out room only uh, by comparison it's a big difference between having a light on in the room and looking at this and having a light on and looking at the ViewSonic ultra short, throw, ultra short Throw that I have. It's like night and day for that. And when you cut the lights out uh, for this projector here, uh, it starts to look better if it's completely dark inside. So at night, watching this thing, no problems, right? Comparing it to the ViewSonic, though the ViewSonic does just destroy it in brightness, clarity, motion, all that kind of stuff. I mean, at 60 hertz, this is... Uh, it kind of stutters and stammers a little bit in that process somewhere or another, but uh, it doesn't look as smooth, as bright, as detailed as the Ultra Short Throw. But you're talking about $1,500 versus $169. So, like, there's really no true comparison. It's just to get your expectations right and to realize, too, for $169 that this is doing the Lord's work. When you actually compare the two, Hopefully it shows in the camera. It's probably not going to show nowhere near as well as being here and actually looking at it. You'll just have to trust me whenever I say that uh, this did good enough. And you can probably see that in the video comparison between it and the ViewSonic. In person, the ViewSonic just blows it away. There's no comparison like the colors, the Rec. 709 of the uh, ViewSonic. This one doesn't really have that accurate of a color. Um, and if you start really playing with the settings, you can see it just fall apart and destroy itself when you start messing with user uh, settings of the picture quality and stuff like that. If you leave it kind of default, you're like, okay, because it's just difficult to go to a different screen, uh, make some changes, and then go back and see your changes. So it's just, you're just kind of shooting in the dark, and then you go back and see the picture, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to leave it in default. That's probably the what you'll end up doing just like I did. But overall, if it's 169 so this is highly recommended by anybody who wants just a fun little projector to carry with you on family vacation trips to the beach or somewhere and you want to go back to your hotel room, watch a movie, watch a kid's movie with your kids, go back to the beach house, whatever it is you got going on. I think this will do that at night. No lights. Uh, and I think you'll be happy. You'll find a sweet spot for it. It's got a little stand in the bottom here that you turn and 
and, and help tilt it up. But with that tricky keystone, man, you're going to want to elevate this thing somehow. So uh, buy a cheap tripod, but not one too cheap, but cheap enough to where you're not canceling out the price of the projector because uh, camera equipment can get that crazy. But get yourself a cheap projector. It's got a thread right down here in the middle for that. And with, with a height of five feet or whatever and below, uh, you should be fine with getting the position that you would need. And then put yourself together a little kit. Like I have a projector kit. I have a portable projector that I carry that's in a hard case. Uh, it's got its little cutouts for the projector to slide down into. And I can just grab that case and we go on vacation and uh, we watch a movie. We have movie nights while we're uh, on vacation. Trying to make it fun, you know. So the link to this will be down in the YouTube description. Please go check it out. It is a good product. I mean, very well made, sturdy. I feel like you could drop this thing and be okay because the keystone and everything else is so out of whack anyway when you get it. Dropping it a few times isn't going to cause any damage, I don't think, to that. That's not a dig. It's just the money's got to be skimped in some departments. And, of course, the whole, there's no autofocus, manual focus. That whole department there with the lens and stuff is where they skipped out on uh, the brightness is what it is for the price, but the build quality is super solid. They could have skipped on that as well and had this the same price, but they didn't. And that's what makes it a good choice if you want a cheap little projector. So make sure to explode on that subscribe button and ding that down so you get notified on the next product that I got coming out. This one will surprise me. This one surprised me a little. I thought, okay, $169 projector, whatever. But it looks beefy in the photos, so I'll give it a shot. And lo and behold, good thing I did. It worked out. See ya.